In this video, we will cover the next topic of host hardening, which is managing users and groups. So individual users, when they are added to our organization, we will grant them certain permissions to be able to access files or folders or even database level access, such as accessing a database or tables within that database, etc. So each of these users that are added to our organization are going to have permissions assigned to them. Let's say that all these users have common permissions that we want to assign to them. Rather than having to do this work for each individual user, we can create a group. And with this group, we just assign the permissions to this group. Anyone that we want to have the permissions of that group, we just add them to that group and they will receive all those permissions. As part of the permissions relating to the operating system, there are two super user accounts. These are accounts that have control over the entire operating system and are able to make changes to the operating system. So on Windows, we have the administrator account. On Unix, we have the root account. So how do you assign users and groups in Windows? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to open up the computer management console. We can click inside of the local groups and users and then the users, and this should pull up all the users. Here we can right click on a specific user and then click on properties. And this then gives us access to what kind of permissions that these users have. So with this administrator account, I can see that we have the password never expire. But if I uncheck this, I can actually check the other checkbox next to it that says user must change password at next login. And so that would force the user to change their password. We can also come up here and click on member of. And when we click on member of, we will see the groups that this user has been assigned to. So right now, this administrator has been assigned to the group of administrators and has all the roles and privileges that are assigned with the administrator group. So what I want you to do is create a guest account and then with this guest account manage the guest account so that password expires and the user must change to the password on next logon. And then assign the guest account to two groups. So you'll have to add them to like the administrators group or the IIS group or whatever else that you want. And then I want you to create a group and then do the following. Add the guest account to this group and then add your primary account to this group. Go ahead and pause this video and then come back when you're ready to go over the answers. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a user. So I'm going to click add someone else to this PC. Then I'll go ahead and click I don't have this person signing information. And then add a user without a Microsoft account. And then I'll go ahead and create a user. So I'll call this the test user. And then we'll have test and test be the password. Security question, uh, I'll just have the test for all of these security questions. So now we have gone ahead and created a user. So the next thing I'm going to do is open up the computer management console. To open up this console, I hit the Windows key or click the bottom left, type in computer management, and it should open up this. So we've already explored services and applications. So what we're going to do now is click on local users and groups, click in the users folder, and we should see all the users that have been assigned here. So as you can see, we have the administrator and the test account, as well as a default guest account. So we're going to right click on this test account and we are going to say that the password does expire and that the user must change this password on the next login. Additionally, we're going to say that this user is a part of the administrators group. So I'll go ahead and just start typing administrators and then we'll go ahead and click check names and sure enough, it pulls it up. So we'll click OK and we have to add this user to this group. I can also click on add and then advanced and then this allows me to search for specific groups so below here we can see all the different groups so if i wanted to add them as an iis user i can click there and click ok and click ok and now this user has been added into two different groups i'm going to go ahead and click ok so the next thing i asked you to do is create a group so we'll go ahead and click on groups and we will right click and click new group and I'll name this group test group with the description of this group is a test. And then I can click on here and say add. So let's go ahead and add a few users to this group. So first one I'm going to do is check for test and sure enough, there's the test user. And just like what I did there, I can click on advanced and this allows me to specify the users. I'm going to click find now and it shows me all the users. So I can actually come here and select the administrator user, click OK. And I will go ahead and create this group, close, and we see the test group has been created. 